उसके कोई तो खाब है खुश है वही जो थोड़ा बेताब है जिंदगी कोई आरजू के चाहिए फिर देखिए Hello and good evening, cinema satsang viewers. How are you doing today? It's a great day for us because we have a fantastic, fabulous singer with us, Karelisa Montiero. Uh, I have, I think, I hope I've got the pronunciation right. The singer of Fir Dekhe of the iconic song of Rock on Fame, and uh, let me frankly uh, tell you, uh, Karelisa, welcome to cinema satsang and welcome to our show. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So let me tell you at the outset, very frankly, uh, I had sent you an interview of uh, Pupali, Rockon's writer. So I was watching Rockon again uh, in order to interview her, and then I fell in love with this song all over again, and I kept listening to it on loop. And then I thought, okay, who's the singer? Who's the singer of this song? Then I checked it out. and i saw your uh, name there but i had no idea whatsoever as to uh, about your details and then i started researching and my god you're such an amazing personality it's you're not just a great singer but i didn't know you were the jingle queen and uh, you have sung over uh, more than 7000 uh, jingles plus you have an ngo you work for cancer patients and you work for fitness so it's your journey has been uh, amazing so you know you're not just a great singer but an amazing person what a discovery for me <laughs> so would you like to share with us some some bits of your journey and you know start from there well, uh, i don't know where to start but i mean uh, all i can say is that music was the first part of the journey uh and then uh, you know a musician is not I'll, i'll just say this a musician is not just one uh, dimensional you know uh, you are an artist in and you you have a lot of sides to you some have many more dimensions to them and some are focused on just a couple uh, after a you know a long uh, career doing jingles and stuff like that i realized that um, you know there's so much more to me than just you know going going to a recording studio recording somebody else's work and coming back i'm i'm sure that my life is not just revolving around just doing that so um and i you know having um and also loss personal loss of you know my family lost them to cancer so i thought you know uh, why not open something or start something that is uh, related to cancer and uh, that's when the whole uh, you know we can go into detail about each and every uh, aspect of it so that's how my journey started i mean obviously it was music music is the soul <laughs> behind everything and after all when you're a musician it's all, it's all heart and soul i mean yes there is a, there's a cerebral part to it where in your writing and your you know using all the uh, how would you say using craft but it's not just that i mean at the end of the day if you put a lifeless soul uh, you know in front of an audience and there it won't touch you so uh, the most important thing is heart and soul for me so and then everything just led from one to another so yes you you uh, hit the nail on the head heart and soul and i think that is what struck the listeners of the song fir dekhiye because i was just reading some of the comments uh, in the uh, on the you know where the song is there and everybody just it stuck uh, somewhere in the soul that the way you rendered that song so beautifully and well that song is yeah you, sorry i'm interrupting you but yeah no, no, the song please. is just not only it also it's also shankar esan loy they put so much of uh, feel into that song i mean uh, esan beautiful melody uh, javed akhtar's beautiful lyrics and loy's beautiful programming as well i mean all that together was just uh, came together as one beautiful you know piece masterpiece what you said but uh, you put your heart and soul into it of 
course, uh, Javed Sab's lyrics and the music is there. Yeah. But uh, what, what, what? They've given uh, lyrics and you know music to several songs, but this songs, this song has stood the test of time. And now I think it's ten years, and people are yeah. still listening <laughs> to it. And yeah, I mean, it. people are. Uh, <laughs> It's strange, you know, because I get a new message from a new person every, not every day, but there's always some, you know, an experience that they've had with that song. It's like they've, uh, you know, uh, rediscovered something in their lives. They've gone out of depression, and as it were. There was, you know, people come together, relationships, you know, come together and stuff like that. So when you read all of that, it's like uh, you realize that, okay, you know, your career and your your effort towards being a musician all your life and giving it that much of importance was not wasted. <laughs> so that makes it all the more meaningful. Yes, yes. That song makes an impact. And as you said in one of your interviews that Farhan Akhtar has put it as, as his alarm clock. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you told me that. yeah. Uh -huh. and uh, this song comes you had also said i i was uh, listening to one of your interviews that it it comes in the end credits but you did not refuse uh to do it and yeah that that choice which you made i mean you know at the end of the day it's something that i i've always loved the uh, shankar and lawrence music sales music has always been and in fact uh, the reason why i respect them so much and there's a reason why i do that is simply because they were the first to give, give credits to every single singer on a song and that was very new for you know our industry when you know if you do it did uh, you wrote a part in something and you would never get credit for it and you know it'll just get lost you you would kind of get lost i was just so blessed that i wrote stuff on their songs and they were the first to give credit to you know all the singers and the musicians that were part of it I would say so. Uh, I always respected that for you know them. I mean, respected them for that. So um, yeah, I so when he uh, when Esan asked me to sing that song, I was like, uh, you know, I'm sure it's a beautiful song, but he he alarmed me about it. You know, this wouldn't be uh, the first song on the you know whatever. It'll be in the song. So I was like, it's cool. I mean, it's because it's y'all. You know, I'm really cool with that. And. Uh... Mm, uh, you are a very versatile singer and uh, you you have a classical style in in you i think western classical and uh, also jazz i think you sing all of that am i right and i also heard some songs in french you sing in french yes. as well well i th this is all an amalgamation of all different styles that are in inside so there's between these two years there's is a mix up of a lot of things and um, there are different cultures there is a different sounds actually i've always had this thing for mimicking but uh, in the sense that while i'm also mimicking i'm also being able to create i i think that's my biggest um, gift uh, so while i'm doing that it's simultaneous obviously it's like also producing it out of my mouth so it's like it's all happens together it's 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 like a spur of the moment feel spontaneous uh, creation so a lot of the times where all the 7000 jingles happened wherever i had to create stuff was all that was that very core of uh, being able to create stuff you know so, so it was like i saw the film i knew exactly what was going to happen and i would just jump into the studio, uh, recording booth and just create something and most of the time what i would do is this whole uh, i would create phonetics where i would see that phonetic really working with the music in the film and a lot of the films were just they were not were real words but they were just phonetics that sounded beautiful for the film uh they call it something there's a word that uh, you know lisa gerard uh, it's like um, there is a word for it i mean there's a certain where you use sounds uh, you create sounds uh, as a language even so uh, i until when i was doing it i didn't know that i was doing it <laughs> but it's something that i had always so i because i loved the sound of phonetics i learned uh, italian um I did also learn French, so that's why I wrote in French and Italian for a lot of things. Um, yeah, I mean, these were fabulous experiences, you know, to work with people and write stuff. 
yes 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 i was uh, all good artists take something and you know adapt it to yeah. produce something completely new and extraordinary uh, yes 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 and uh, the, i am not uh, are you a trained singer by are you a trained i'm no. not a trained singer i never i think the only reason why i'm a singer is because i as a child i listened to my mom and dad sing uh, my father was a trained classical singer but uh, there was no way that he was tra- he trained me but i just listened to a lot of his uh, his music whatever little i could listen to it was time where you know you had just uh, vinyl tapes you know those those vinyl records i mean so a couple of them and i listened to but my main thing was listening to his voice and listening to my mom's voice so that was how i uh, was able to in some strange way uh, adapt some kind of technique into my own voice so i would say i was also genetically given that uh, you know the voice box but uh, i also had this thing of uh, how would you say adapting and you know reaching out and finding exactly where the sound was coming from stuff like that so i really didn't uh, i really didn't uh, strain at all in fact i because the because of the kind of creative person i was i always Uh, hesitated from training myself because i felt in some strange way i might just become this mold and uh, i'll be so structured that i wouldn't be able to get out of that structure you know my mind would just get set into something very specific so i let myself free <laughs> and was able to do much more i think like a god's gift for you uh, i would say course, that yeah of, of course coupled with uh, your hard work and dedication and talent yeah i think it's just talent <laughs> it say it was very hard work <laughs> i also li- listen to one song called uh, hallelujah i think uh, it's there on uh, youtube oh, yeah. you sang it beautifully and it's almost in tears when you hear that rendition it's connected to god in some way that that whole song and feeling there is yeah i guess it's a spiritual uh, i would say the you know voice is connected to your soul i mean mm-hmm. uh for me at least so i mean whether it is uh, i'm not so much into you know religious uh, aspects uh, because i'm not religious at all but certainly the spiritual aspect of a human being connected to oneself and to the greater the the universe or whatever you call it uh is important to know that side of you even if you don't understand it too well but you're always searching mm-hmm. uh, i don't know much about uh, technicalities of the uh, singing part but fir dekhiye me the harkate jo if you can call it that the yeah. you know the utar chadao and harkate and that's really lovely you know that uh, the the stretching part i i, I hope i can make uh, have you and have bun <laughs> in my bad <laughs> I, I, mean, no, I, yeah. i guess it's, it's my own uh, bringing my own uh, technique of singing i guess into uh, a song like that where in uh, you know a lot I'll, and I, and i'm quite sure that if i was working with another music director they may have not been too uh, open to me singing certain notes that way because uh, a lot of them are very traditional you know they like to stick to a very a certain type of singing they don't like a little even a little vibrato which is a natural thing actually for lots of people mm-hmm. uh so um which was thank goodness esan and loy let me you know be open about using the the nuances of what i used in the song because they realized that it was so powerful and more and stronger than having to use a tr- traditional way of singing you understand what i'm trying to say yeah so that you were stretching the words is, literally i was doing it the words. way i felt was i was interpreting the song that way and if they had stopped me from doing that i think it would have not been the same feel you know it would have been just a very usual kind of everyone singing type of thing you know? yeah you i was doing anyway you know i was doing I mean, in advertising, I was doing it in other songs as well, wherein people want you to do a certain kind of uh, technique of singing, and they want you to stick to it and not have vibrato and you know be very, 
very very uh, military precise. militant about it yes so <laughs> uh it's not even did you say precise it's not precise yeah, yeah. it's just devo it's just so empty <laughs> it's so you know it's like when you do a uh, when you do a dance song uh, i'll just give you an example uh when you sing a note they'll tell you because they process it so much because it's a dance song and the whole song is so electronic they'll want you to sing the note without any vibrato and it's very straight so it's like if you sing uh so they use that note and then they do whatever they want with it so that's a different thing but this was not it you know this is like a a soulful song you 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 encourage you're inspiring people to believe and hope, to hope and it has to come from the soul it has to be <laughs> organic and, you know without having to think of all this i just went into the studio and i just sang it the way i felt was a song to be sung and uh, they narrowed down the lyrics you know we came back again and i just did it i gave it the same soul and they did not say you know don't do it this way uh i was not even sure whether it was going to be, go through because i mean it, although they all loved it like javed sahab just loved it and uh, ehsan loved it and loy and they all loved it but uh, because as i said you know we're still stuck in a very traditional way of singing technique and everything you know i think we still need to get out of that mindset of you know how a hindi song should be sung so that's one thing that uh, i think has changed a lot but you know in terms of singers we still stuck into that thing and the hindi you have to sing it this way you know yeah that's <laughs> sad because uh, yeah that's sad you can do so much more you can express yourself so much more you know it doesn't have to be a certain particular strict way mm. but in ads also i found some of the singers i was listening to Uh, that uh, you have this variation in that like limpa is different from ponds yeah. ponds is different yes. from i think lnt uh, all three i found yeah. different limpa i found a little softer and uh, yeah. ponds i found a little bassy and lnt i found a little classical these three i have just noted it down i i thought all three were very differently done yeah yeah i mean that's exact uh, that's like whatever's in your box your magic box you know I, i look at it that way you just pull it out whatever is relevant to the so you know whatever is relevant to what your whatever music is made you use that i mean like sometimes they would tell me to sing in a certain way and i would like i knew it was just not matching and i would always say can i do this way just see if you like it and then you you know go back so whatever some people want it in certain way some people like oh, wow this is really working so then you're in synergy with the you know music music director and the producers and whoever so yeah you remember you remember all those limpa bonds and lnt which i'm talking about yeah <laughs> limpa of course you know. limpa because of course because you know it was uh, played a lot more but a lot of ads that i had done unless i heard it again like you know i would kind of remember but the experiences some were very uh, like i remember them the other were not so many memories <laughs> the too many times where i had to do you know what the funny part is that even though this i mean we're talking about jingles when you go into a studio you you uh, basically are selling a product a brand you're not selling a album you're selling a brand so when you're selling a brand you have to keep in mind the the client's needs uh, which are expressed through the music director basically and the the production house that has made the film so everyone together there tells you exactly through the film like you watch the film and you know exactly what you so it's a very usually generic kind of uh, thing you can't go uh, hallelujah on the song Or on the jingle, you can't do that. You can't blast it out. Although there are some times when they want that kind of like they want a very generic rock song, so then you go blasting into it into the thing. And then if the you know if it's a very specific kind of genre, but otherwise it's a very generic thing. So what I used to do is just to be a little uh, you know uh, uh, how would you say crafty, I would. take the jingle that they wanted which was very generic and i would try and insert a few little uh, you know world kind of uh, sounds into it and you know make it just make it different so that i was happy with it 
for all posterity and that everyone else also was happy so that made everyone happy <laughs> so i just made it tried to make it as different as from the last one <laughs> no yeah if you pons was a little bassy and uh, lnt had a little yeah. classical flavor yeah. to it. and of course limka is so beautiful yeah, yeah. and uh, also that french vaishnav danto i saw, i heard that uh, which you did in french with the bhajan vaishnav danto tere kahiye re in the that was for the opening ceremony uh, so that, yes again that was very was, nice very nice take so shankar wanted me to just write in a few languages because we wanted to represent various languages in this uh, films various countries so i i chose the languages i decided that i do german uh did i do italian and uh, i think i did chinese yes chinese as well so it was very varied you know so like uh, it was a lovely concept and we were all like yay you know <laughs> can i singing in chinese and i don't even i don't even know the language so i was also a little you know at that point of time i didn't have uh, anybody to uh, tutor me or you know coach me it was just such a short period of time and then i i just went with my gut i i tried to listen to enough of chinese and you know listen to the phonetics in a you know in each word and make sure that like i ran through it a lot of times to make sure that it didn't sound like some other words or some other, something else and i ran through the thing again and again and you know translated it and stuff like that in italian of course i italian and uh, german was something also i love german the sounds it's it's a beautiful sound so it has this softness but yet it is a little strong so that was not a problem because i heard german at least but chinese is a very very tricky language if you've not studied it at all hmm so, i missed the chinese i don't know i didn't listen to the chinese i have to go back <laughs> no, chinese as well chinese it was fun it was fun thing yeah germany i think is uh, one of your favorite uh, countries because i saw it somewhere i think you know on your channel no i went um germany no not really <laughs> it's just uh, another Second. language in europe it's lovely language yeah and uh, uh, yes you also came out with the album unfortunately i have not heard that would you like to share something about that the album uh, illusions the only english album and actually one of my only independent albums that i did uh it also happened to be released at the same time i ran to pune i did an ultra marathon uh over 78 kilometers if i'm uh, right uh we ran over 3 days when i say we me and my husband both ran uh, you know on the highway the express way sorry uh from bombay to pune and uh, it was a very very uh, how would you say it was a very uh, tiring is is a very mild word but it, my body was like and i'm not even like till then i was just a, a marathon runner like i i ran marathons as in i did the half a marathon but i went straight from half a marathon straight away to doing an ultra marathon which was the first night i did like 55 kilometers and then i stopped and i did another 20 yeah and then the next night and so the total is 180 kilometers sorry um it's 180 kilometers from bombay to pune so yeah we covered 78 on the first night and then the second and the third night we reached uh, you know outskirts of pune and then i ran in an extra 5 uh, kilometers in the in a campus because our fans coming there and they ran with me and then from there we went straight and finished at the hotel so because of that i did uh, release also an album and uh, i wanted it to be uh, related to the ngo that i uh, started and founded called angel in disguise because one of the songs on the album is also angel in disguise so it all culminated in uh, one big thing wherein i started the ngo angel in disguise and you know the album was released and the proceeds went to all the you know uh, the cancer patients from you know who who needed help and stuff like that and if you read about it you know a lot of the information is online <laughs> so uh, that was the idea of uh, 
Illusion, which is the name of the album. And uh, the Illusion was sung, uh, you know, uh, Vishal Didlani was featured in that song as well. And a lot of great uh, artists were part of, who were part of the industry, also were part of the album. Mm -hmm. Would you like to uh, tell us a little bit about your NGO and your fitness work? Oh, well, I, I'm a runner, basically. I started running uh, about eight years ago. And the reason why I did that, because I said, you know, uh, from not being an athlete at all or not being into any sport, uh, I wanted to be at least fit. And that was the reason why I uh, ran. The reason why I did the marathon from Bombay to Pune, the ultra marathon, was basically to, to encourage people to, uh, to fitness as against, you know, uh, because, I mean, and also awareness of cancer. I mean, it's just that uh, I wanted to do that for my parents, you know, just in, uh, in their name and in homage to them. So I, I ran and I said, this is always a thought that I wanted to do in the sense of opening or uh, starting something for cancer patients. And that's why uh, Angel in Disguise Foundation happened. And uh, yeah, I mean, and my idea of opening that foundation is just not only to help cancer patients, it's also helping uh, women, women in distress, women who, you know, uh, poor women and children who are abused. So things like that, wherein I want to be uh, of some help at least. And that's why I started that. And of course, the music, music always stays on, but you know, these things, a part of your life, you have to do them. <laughs> you have to give back. You have to give back in some way. So that's the reason. Uh, any uh, musical inspirations uh, you have? Any, like, uh, any musical inspirations? God, so many, so many, so many. Uh, being part of the, you know, like uh, influenced by Western music. I mean, there, in the eighties, there were so many brilliant musicians who were just brilliant singers, writers. I mean, there were so many. I mean, I can't even say because then I would be, you know, downplaying the others. <laughs> but of course, my, I would say the, you know, the best teachers for me for anything were my parents because I listened to them. And because of that sound, that they thankfully sounded great. You know, I wanted to be a musician all my life. They were the first people with really beautiful voices. So yes. I guess that's the reason. <laughs> so lovely. And uh, well, would you like to give any message this difficult times which we are going through to yeah. people, to aspiring singers, to, to everybody basically, any, anything? Because uh, you you are a survivor basically and you have, uh, you know, you had a very, uh, I would say, if I can use the word tough, maybe life and then, but you've come out and you, you've uh, reached a place and, uh, you know, you've, you've achieved so much and not just in terms of, you know, in, uh, like su social success, but overall as a person, as a human being as well, I would say. Well, I don't want to sit here and preach to musicians because it's really very tough. And there is no way that, you know, my uh, words would bring any sort of, uh, you know, source of, you know, them having a career. And when I say having a career is when you're actually paid. And right now the situation is not very bright for everyone because there's so much of unemployment and it, otherwise anyway, you know, uh, leave aside the musicians. But uh, all I can say is that, you know, if you can survive this as a musician, and if you can uh, pull through till, you know, till a bit of time wherein, you know, things will just get better, then I think uh, it's a choice that you make. I mean, there's no one who can tell you what to do. You have to know, you have to have the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding your weaknesses and your strengths. If you think that, you know, the situation is so really bad and uh, and you're really young, um, you have a lot more time than somebody who's already a musician. 
Mexico, uh, you know, like who's had a career for a long time and now is having it bad. So it's, there are two different, there are two different kinds of musicians. One who's, you know, who's been been a musician for a while, a while and just having a bad uh, time, really bad time. That's a very different situation. But when you're young, you have the 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 ability to mold into you know various other things. You can do other things. So all I can see is either which way. Uh, you have to be able to tell yourself this is your journey. Yes, people are dependent on you, and you have to make that choice. And whichever choice you make, whether you say, okay, you know, I'm I'm a mu musician. I'll never stop being a musician, right? Uh, but right now, what is the need of the hour? Uh, I need to do it, and I can always, you know, get back into playing music. I don't. All I'm saying is why I'm saying this is don't get into a you know, get yourself into a place where you're depressed because you don't have work and don't get into a place where it's it's affecting your mental health. Um, whatever you do, it should, and especially music, if it makes you unhappy, don't do it. Like in whatever way, because I, I can tell you this, there are a lot of people right now who are struggling to get a job because of the situation. I mean, you know, there are bigger companies closing down because of the inability to, you know, to service the whatever. I mean, just just try and keep yourself together. That's all I'm saying. And if music can keep it together, at least in terms of uh, your everyday, if you're not a musician, that is, then uh, that's why we are here. <laughs> but I, all I want to say is to the young people, uh, don't lose hope if you're a musician or a singer. Uh, keep working at your craft, even though, you know, you may not uh, be able to be a professional, keep working on your craft. And if you're really, really good, I'm sure the universe will give you that moment when you will be proud of yourself. For more such content, please like, share and subscribe to Cinema Satsang.